Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you cars that are kind of fun and usable in the GTA Snow. You're probably thinking Snow's probably going to go anytime soon. They've not got rid of it just yet, but in on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, there will be snow. So they're probably going to get rid of snow on January 2nd. Hopefully you enjoy the video. Now Draugr. The Draugr is overkill. Overkill for the snow. It is really that good that I would say it's overkill. And I say it's overkill because this is more for extreme off-roading. This is for like going up Mount Chiliad. But even going up Mount Chiliad, this vehicle can do it in the snow as well. It's just ease for this car. But sometimes you just want normal vehicles to drive around. Not something that's designed specifically for going off-roading. So that's why all the cars on this list are going to be kind of normal mundane vehicles that we like to drive around anyway but are also very good in the snow. Okay, we're gonna start off with the Jekyll. Probably not the car you're expecting. Probably one of the more surprising cars on this list. But this vehicle makes no sense. The handling physics make no sense. When you turn on this car, even the car itself is not expecting it. It just grips and turns. There's no such thing as understeer with this vehicle. It's almost like this vehicle's made for a go-karting track. It just turns with ease and very direct as well. I thought the limitations would be hit like in the snow, but no, they're not. Something you do need to make sure you do is catch the rear end though when it goes because it will go because the front end is way too grippy. Now the 10F wide body does come up as a fun vehicle for me in the snow. Because the way this vehicle moves, when you drive it and the fact that it's mid-engine, the mass kind of moves all together. It doesn't, the rear end doesn't move, the front end doesn't move. The whole vehicle just moves together. And in the snow, it amplifies that. It's just like a little hockey puck just being moved side to side. Makes it very manageable and it just looks very nice when you're driving fast. You know, it does get very expensive though, 1.675 million without the HSW upgrade. But you know, a lot of you probably bought this when it got released. If not, the 10F also does the same thing, but it's just got a lot less power. That's the issue with this vehicle is the power. It's got so much that that's what's making it slide most of the time. The Ryan Hart. The Ryan Hart is one of those cars when I was testing it, I was not expecting this vehicle to be on this list. But honestly, it gripped up so well where I was kind of surprised. I had to knock a few cars off the list because this car kind of set a new boundary. So surprising to me. I do love this car, but it's 1.6 million. If you guys want to spend that money, I wouldn't personally. A lot of these cars I wouldn't spend, I'd use if you already have the vehicle because, you know, the snow's going to go on New Year's Day. After New Year's Day, we're not going to need these snow vehicles. But if you want something really grippy and easy to predict, hardly ever, you know, oversteers, then this is your car. Now, here's another really fun car, and it's the Trera XO. A lot of, again, another expensive car. They have to be so expensive, these vehicles. I mean, except the Jackal, the one that you can get off the street. But the Jackal is a bit slow. Out of all the vehicles, I definitely think you shouldn't buy this car just for the snow because it's 2.9 million. I mean, it's an amazing car anyway. It has a really high top speed, but you know, the fact that it's 2.9 million, this it is such a fun car. It is really fun. This is probably one of the more fun vehicles on the list where the front grips so well, even at really high speeds and mind blowing speeds. And then you have to kind of fix and correct this car all the time. And that's the fun aspect of this car. You just have to catch it all the time. But it doesn't feel like it's on snow. Now the Komoda. This is the best car, normal car on this list. I say normal car because the next one's not so, such a normal car. But this car grips so well. And I was try at the airport here, I was trying to get it to like agitate by going really fast around these corners, these left hand turns. Well, not really corners, but you know what I mean. But this car just wouldn't budge. Like, no, these car, this this car grips to the ground even even when there's snow. I didn't even have off-road wheels on this. I just had normal tires. But no, this vehicle still acts like one of the grippiest cars in the game. And the car's rear-wheel drive. <laughs> it's rear-wheel drive. It's crazy. Now the Corsita. Now I've been narrowing this list down by fun and usable cars. And this, I think, is both. It's just so fun to use because the back end comes out, but it comes out so gradual where you've got so much time to correct the car. A lot of the cars on this list are like snappy when they come out, but this is so smooth. It makes it so fun to use. And then it's also usable because you can control it. And then it's so fun in that aspect as well. Honestly, this car feels so nice. You can kind of see it from the way I'm driving that the car back end comes out smooth and then corrects itself very smoothly. Not snappy, a brilliant car to use in the snow. Now the Comet Safari. This is definitely one that 
or, or looks like it is for the snow. I mean, it's got Safari in its name, so we know what it's used for. But we already know this is a great off-roading vehicle, and it doesn't differ when it comes to snow. This vehicle is such good fun in the snow, such great usability in the snow. And the fact that it squats down, it just it's just nice to look at, nice to drive. It's been forgotten. There's so many Comet variants now, but this is definitely the one to use. If you've got this in your garage, use this in the snow. It's so easy to use, so refreshing to use. All around great handling vehicle for the snow. The Retinue Mark II. Retinue Mark II is such a great vehicle. It's rear wheel drive. It's rear wheel drive. It should not handle like this in the snow, but it does. And that's mainly because it's a rally car. These vehicles are based on rally cars, but really this goes for all rally cars in the game. The Tropos Rally, the normal Retinue, the Omnis. You know, vehicles like that are all really good in the snow. I wonder, I actually wonder what the new Mini is going to be like. I hope that comes out in the snow period. It probably won't, but you know, that's supposed to be a rally variant of a Mini. So that probably would be good in snow too. Okay, so I wanted to share some tips in the snow because I know driving in the snow can be frustrating sometimes, like when you're trying to actually do a mission. And here we are, we are in the Banshee. I've picked the car that would have the most probable would have the most problems or that or a muscle car as you can see this car takes forever to get away if you know we're starting on a slight uphill and then we want to get to places but you can fix this if you actually throttle less so if you hold in your trigger about 10 20 percent you can it depends on what car it is but uh, i like to do it about 20 percent with this car and you can get away a lot faster so next time you guys get in your car, just use less throttle instead. You'll get places way faster in the snow. And when it comes to turning corners, just make sure you let go of the throttle. Just make sure you let go of the throttle. You also don't want to be braking and turning because that will cause a lot more understeer. So if we turn this corner, we try turning this corner under brake. As you can see, we're going straight for the car in front of us. But if we do the same speed or even faster speeds in the next corner, but we let go of the throttle, then we can turn way better than we could on that first go. But yeah, the most important aspect of this is to learn throttle control. Just don't use 100% of the throttle all the time. I always see people, even when it comes to off-roading, people start using 100% throttle and then they get stuck. So just like on a racetrack, if you're going to brake or you need to brake, then you brake in a straight line and then you turn in. And then it's so much more efficient. And you'll make the corner instead of hitting a lamppost. <laughs> Now this tip is slightly advanced, but it does help a lot when it comes to the snow. I picked a front wheel drive vehicle because it's a bit understeery, so I wanted to pick a car that actually makes sense to do this with. It works on all cars, by the way, and all you want to do is, but next time you're turning a corner, not like this, this is not me <laughs> taking it. Oh my God, that that is not me doing it. <laughs> That's me just trying to turn a corner to show that this vehicle is understeery. But next time, you just want to make sure that you tap the handbrake when you turn. So mid-turn, just tap the handbrake and your car will turn in more. So I have to slow down here. So when you turn in, just tap the handbrake and your car just, it's almost like this vehicle is all-wheel drive. So I'm going to do it again. Turn here and then tap. And that time, I think the mass took me a bit. I need to slow down a bit more. Okay, I'm going to turn left here. I'm going to tap the handbrake and the car just directs more into the corner. Now, obviously, it's not going to make it stick to the ground as much. That's why my car's sliding away. But it will make you turn way tighter than you turning before. Just tap the handbrake. And yeah, you're going to get places a lot better than anyone else does. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Hopefully, you did enjoy this video. And hopefully, it's not an awkward one where there's no snow left in GTA when I upload this or a day after I upload this. Hopefully, it's staying until New Year's Day. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, you did enjoy. See you guys in the next one.